Okay, how do we feel about do-overs when it comes to making art? Like, how many times could you try something over and over again before you get completely frustrated and think you just suck at life? I don't know if it matters what that number is, but it got me to thinking about do-overs and how we can do them better. Recently, I was painting sea creatures, and the first attempt was quickly awkward and unconvincing. I knew it early on, and so I breezily started over. My next attempt went a lot further and was feeling okay early on, but moments became overworked and the composition got weird in a bad way, and then I begrudgingly decided to start again. Now, lucky for me, on this try, the third try, things went a lot better and I was feeling pretty confident overall. It wasn't perfect, but it was at a point where I felt like I could put it out into the world and be okay teaching about it, and yeah. But I thought at that moment, if I had to do a fourth try, a fourth redo, I was gonna have been really mad. And then that got me to thinking, well, how could I reframe this fourth redo? I mean, even though it didn't happen, how could I have approached things better? And how could I maybe teach you all how to feel better and set yourself up for more inspirational redos. So I sat down and came up with a few ways that I think will really be helpful and that I utilize when it comes to redos. Let's get into it. Now, in case we haven't established it, redos in the art journey, remaking art, trying it again, whatever you wanna call it, exercises, they're so important. It builds muscle memory, it builds skill, it builds technique, and you get a lot more confidence the more that you're used to putting brush to paper in a similar way over and over again. But when your redo doesn't elicit the result you were expecting, frustration enters. So here are a bunch of ways to tamper down that frustration. Number one, delay the redo. But it's important here to say, don't delay it for too long. Like, take five minutes, stand up, take a breath, stretch, look through a magazine, and then get back to it. You'll feel a lot fresher and less likely to be annoyed with yourself. Number two, change supplies. And this is more important after a few redos using the same supplies, because I do think it's important to try to get it quote unquote right with the same materials you started with. But if you're at the point of complete frustration, a switch up in materials is really going to keep your momentum going. And the beauty here is once you redo the same artwork with new materials and have success, and you likely will feel a lot better about this redo, you can go back and try again with the original materials. And I pretty much guarantee you're gonna be on a much more satisfying path with this particular artwork. Number three, and maybe this should have been number one, but we're gonna go with it. Evaluate what went wrong. I use words like right and wrong and perfect lightly, but you know what I mean. Take 30 seconds, not more, not less. Time yourself if you have to. 30 seconds to look through your last attempt and identify things that you felt were not working well. And that way you're better armed to attack them in the redo. If we go into a remaking session of artwork without really knowing what we're targeting, we can feel overwhelmed and all over the place, and that just doesn't help things. Number four, and this can feel counterintuitive, so stick with me, but try something else first. That's right. Before you go into the redo, take two or three minutes, a little bit of scrap paper, and just doodle something else. Try a little ombre wash of three or four colors you've been dying to try. Maybe you have a new watercolor palette you haven't swatched yet. Swatch the first five colors. Do something for a short period of time that's gonna interrupt your frustration kind of train of thought, and then go back to the redo. You'll be a whole lot more fresh and inspired and ready to tackle that redo. How many times have I said redo? Anybody got a count? I'm wondering. And number five, probably the most important because it's the one that's gonna bail you out when you're your most fed up. Be okay with walking away. Being creative and successful with your art has as much to do with knowing when to call it quits as it does knowing what color to use, knowing what paint brand works best for a particular application and so on and all the technical stuff, you know what I mean. 
knowing that it's okay, feeling good about walking away when it's time is just as powerful in your creative journey as any other detail you learn and master. Sometimes it's just time to cook a meal, do some laundry, fold the clothes, go for a walk. Sometimes those mundane activities that otherwise might be considered a distraction from your art journey are the most impacting thing you can do when you're your most upset, sad, frustrated, disappointed in yourself. Because the last thing I want for you friends is to get so all of those things I just mentioned that you never come back, that you never sit back down pick up the brush and put it back to paper again. This watercolor journey is as much about learning to take care of our minds as it is our supplies and our skills and all of the practicality matters that come up along the way. Practical matters? Practicality? Uh, well, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. I talk a lot more about redoing your art and how valuable it is to your journey in this video. So watch it next, it's a quick one, and then get on to some happy, happy painting redos. Until next time.